like to share an introduction to a uh, five axis swarf with you. Here I have my five axis part inside of SolidWorks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up SurfCam and we're gonna say file, open, use my drop down box, pick up the SolidWorks part and open that up. And we'll go ahead and we'll highlight that and spin that around just a bit so it's easier for us to see. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to do a 5-axis swerve cut on this pocket right here. So to do that, we can say NC, go to 5-axis, multi-surface swerve. Make sure my multi-select is on. And I'm going to pick those surfaces. Roll around just a little bit. Very good. So we're going to say that we're done. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to pick a tool. This is a, I'm going to do this with a 3 8 bull nose here, cutter. We'll say OK. We'll ignore our feeds and speeds for now. First thing you notice here is the rapid area. Well, since this is a cylinder, that a plane is probably not the best choice. So we're going to go to our rapid area. We're going to go to a cylinder. And in this case, it is parallel to the X, and that's a pretty good guess so far as the size is concerned of our cylinder. So the type of cutting method that we're going to be doing is indeed uh, parallel to a curve. And what we want is just one cut. So I'm going to choose number of cuts as one. And we're going to go zig for vector control. We're going to go relative to the cutting direction, and this is a good place to start, ortho at each position. We're going to lead our leads and links to default with no gouge checking, and we'll see what we have. So let's say OK. Beginning element of the curve. For a swerve cut, you always want the curve to be on the low side. And something that can help us there is the way that we choose that curve. I'm going to go to my chain options and what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit the tangency there to make my life a little bit easier in picking that chain. So we'll say OK. Go right about here and I can see that that's done. OK. So that's not too bad but we've got a good rapid area coming in there. Let's go ahead and see how it it works. Hmm. Okay, well, it's going the wrong direction. So what let's do here, we can see what's going on. Okay, we want to go the other way. So I'm going to get out of my back plot. I'm going to go over here into my operations manager. We're going to regen with original. Go to my cut control and instead of clockwise I'm going to choose counterclockwise and say OK. So now let's do our back plot and that looks a lot better. OK, but did you notice the way that the lead-ins weren't the best? So let's go ahead and let's add lead-ins to that. So we're going to regen with original leads and links. So the first thing you want to do is to approach from a rapid clearance. We have some nice graphics that help us with that. And we want it to retract to that as well. So let's take a look at our lead-in. Well the default lead-in here is a tangent arc at 90 degrees at 200 percent. So since this is a fairly small uh, pocket, we're going to change that and limit the size of that radius of the arc. That's for our lead-in. And we're going to go ahead and modify the same for our lead-out. We'll say OK. So let's give that a try. Say OK. Alright, well that's looking considerable better. Let's do that once again. This time, let's go to our back plot, leading in nicely, 
coming around the corner and leading out. Great. So we can look to see that it's performing the way that it should. We have a nice lead in, a lead out. It's entering the material in a proper manner. It's a good introduction to 5-axis SWARF.